Hey YouTube, Bernard here from Wing That was weird. <laughs> hey YouTube, Bernard here from Weekly How, and in this lesson, we're gonna be teaching you a very simple way of displaying HTML codes in front end, also known as the store front. So if you have a store, chances are you already know some apps that display some sort of a feature like an announcement bar where it says that there's a there's a sale or a promo where you can use some code like Weekly How or something like that. It's not that actually that hard, especially if you know JavaScript, HTML, or CSS. These three languages are very, very powerful and you can do a lot of things with them. So in this tutorial, we're going to be talking about script tag API. That's right, script tag API. So if you are directly watching this video on YouTube, we can go to our blog where we explain what is script tag API and how you can use it. Fully detailed article, you can check that out. We'll put the link in the description below. Another thing before we get started, we'll assume that you have watched the previous parts of this series because this is a full Shopify app development tutorial series. So if you haven't watched the previous tutorials, you may get confused as to where we are right now. So, highly recommended. Go watch the previous tutorials. Playlist is down below as well. All right, so let's get started. So, before we get into Script Tag API, of course, we need to set up our Shopify app once again because in the previous tutorial, we can only display Shopify products API, Shopify products, Shopify product images, stuff like that. So, this time it's gonna be a little bit different. We're gonna need to use Access Scope. Or different access scopes something like that so let's go and open our install.php and I hope you have that as well in your Shopify app I believe and I'm assuming all right so here we are in install.php we have here uh, a little bit of variables like the shop API key scopes redirect URI and install URL and we'll get redirected to the install install URL once we access this uh, script all right, so what are we actually going to change with this code is the access scopes, this line right here. The variable scopes currently has read orders, write products, read themes, and write themes. So we're going to add write script tags. Script tags. All right, so that's the only thing that we're going to change for this certain script so let's save that and let's go back to our shopify app so currently this is our shopify app so it says right here oh, we're using uh theme id it's been uh discussed in a previous tutorial um this is shopify app example by weekly how this is where we discussed about displaying shopify images product images and product titles and stuff like that so we're going to uninstall this app once again and then install this app again because we have changed the access scope we need to install it again to be able to like use the access scope because if you go to the about you can only see right here that our app can only read orders and modify products modify theme templates theme assets we can read products stuff like that and that's the only thing we can't actually do script tags stuff like that so we're going to delete this app or uninstall it and then um, we're going to reinstall it again so let's open our app so let's go to weeklyhow.com weeklyhow.com slash um, apps slash example underscore app slash install that php shop is equal to weekly all right so as you can see right here we're about to install our shopify app so right here we can manage the products view orders and manage your store online stores if you go to view details you can include uh you can add theme you can manage themes you can add script tags in your online store so let's install that and this time we were able to we're going to be able to um manage our script tags add script tags edit stuff like that delete so let's save this access token to our app i believe we need to open our index at php once again and then change our access code so this time we're still not using database to save access tokens we still need to do that in the future but for now let's just replace this one with the new access token there you go so let's save that and then uh, let's open our app once again. 
there you go now we're back with the shopify app that we have created in the previous tutorials and this time let's continue with the script tag api so let's open our index.php once again so we're here now so this is our index.php i'm really sorry for my how the way i talk it sometimes gets confused or uh, something like that all right so let's go back to our index.php and let's continue with this one and use script tag api so over here let's add another lines of code which is we're going to declare script tag variable so let's do that so script tag is equal to shopify call and then you know what let's just copy this one because we don't have to type it all yeah it's really important to be lazy sometimes yeah uh anyway let's uh change our api call from this to admin slash api slash 2019 make sure you use the latest api and then scripts script tag script underscore tag that stags that j sun beware of typos make sure you use admin api to 2019 10 and then script tags that json so make sure you uh put that like that and then instead of put we'll use post because we're going to add a new script tag and not get the script tags nor delete them or update them so we're going to add so let's we're going to use post instead so okay next line is of course script tag script tag is equal to json the code and then um, script tag once again and then the response response and then json pretty print there you go all right so now we're done with calling another api we need to actually change the array variable that we're passing to the function so let's call this one um, script array and then we're going to declare another variable here, which is a script array. And then we're going to create array. And then um, let's call this one script tag. Make sure this is singular. And then make an arrow, array arrow, stuff like that. And then call another array because this is a multi-dimensional array. And yeah event let's call event we need that and then for the value of event we're going to use on load so every time uh the store is loaded or every time the app is loaded it's gonna be uh called or the app is gonna be or the script is gonna be called and then for the src of course we need to create the sr the source file which is something like https and then your URL, make sure you change this one to your URL. And then apps slash example app slash um, scripts slash script that js. Something like that. Okay, so let's don't forget the semicolon over here. Make sure you close that. And then we'll save this one and i believe we're done with this all we need to do is to create the script for the script tag so let's create a new file and call it script.js all right so before we start with this javascript just keep just keep in mind that when you write the source the source url over here just make sure you put the script on the right directory so for example i have a folder like apps and inside the apps folder i have the example app this basically you this has been set up on the on the shopify app uh admin dashboard whatever you call that partner or something like that and then on the apps folder in the app folder you create a new folder and then script that js or you can just do like on the root folder you can just call it script that js but i really want to organize my file so i made another folder for just simply for the script javascript so yeah just that important note it's really good to make it's really important to keep your files organized especially if you're creating a very huge project 
All right, so let's go back to script. Let's change this to, uh, I mean, let's create a new uh, J jQuery function, which is, I believe, document and then dash uh, ready. Yes, ready function. And then over here, function. And then let's call this one. Uh, inside of the document dot ready function, let's create something like a body. And then prepend uh, div class header and then id is equal to header and then that's it. Let's just add another lines of header tags over here h3 and then let's close the div like that. Don't forget to put the angle bracket over here. Div class header, ID header, H3 header 3. And let's add a text here. Um, welcome to Weekly How. All right, so let's close this by adding a semicolon. Don't forget to add semicolon over here as well. And another thing that we're going to add is, um, I think, a style. Let's, let's style this a little bit. So... Uh, prepend another prepend function. Let's add um, style. Don't forget angle bracket style, and then close that style. And then over here, let's add that header, or you can call the ID instead, and then add padding stuff like that. And then let's make this twelve pixel, and then um, for the you know what? Uh, it's gonna be a little bit messed up. So 12 pixel by uh, 17 or 18. Okay, 18 pixel. So 12 by 18 pixel. And then for the background, I'll use um, a little bit of gray. So 555. Five, five. That's a lucky number, I believe. We'll uh, add a little bit of color for the text. So let's add f1 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 let's close that and then let's close the style and go bra brackets next is the content the content of this the content of this header so padding <laughs> and then 16 uh pixel and then let's close that there you go next is we're going to add sticky and then angle brackets. No, it's not angle bracket. It's curly brackets. Open curly braces. And then position. Make sure it's fixed. And then top. Let's make sure this is zero. And the weed. Supposed to be obviously 100%. Because this is a header file. Or a header uh, division or panel. Whatever you call that. And don't forget the semicolon over there. And then closed curly braces. Alright, so next is... Uh, class sticky plus dot content so we're actually not yet uh, creating this classes over here we're just setting up the style for now so top and then 100 pixel then let's close that make sure you close the style as well and semicolon there you go all right, next let's work for the um, for the sticky header for the header. So let's create a new variable over here. Let's call it a header and then document that get element by ID and then let's call this header because we're going to target this header. So header is equal to document that get element by ID header header. All right, it might get confusing, but keep in mind that this is a header ID you can change this to for example my header and then just change this to my header something like that it's not a uh, it's not that hard to understand I mean yeah but anyway var is sticky and then equals to header that off set top so we're going to get the off the top offset of header and put it on the stick of variable so we need that and then window that on scroll is gonna be like when you scroll down your uh, your page this function will uh, 
will be called will be triggered so let's use this um if window that page y offset is greater than sticky the value of sticky then we'll make our header class and then add the class sticky which we made right over here so it makes sense if you scroll down your page this sticky will be added to our header and then this will become a sticky header or our bar stuff like that so next is if it's not uh if you're not scrolling or if it's not greater than the, the value of sticky then we'll just make it not sticky that sounds really weird anyway yeah let's remove the sticky class there we go and then don't forget the semicolon over here make sure you put all the semicolons at the end it's really important you don't want to mess that up and yeah also let's put a semicolon over here because this is a one line of code and this is not just a function we need that especially if you're just assigning it to the on scroll all right so let's save that and then let's try it all right so before we can actually try to our store we need to refresh our shopify app because we need to run all the scripts in the index.php file and we need to let it create the actual script tag so if you don't refresh it this will not be triggered and you don't have a script tag so you need to run it once again so let's refresh this and there you go as you can see don't nothing really changed but if you guys look at this uh admin api slash 2019-10 slash creep underscore tags that json you will see that there's actually our script tag over here so you can see right here weeklyhow.com apps example app script script JS. So it's actually been added to our uh, script tags, uh, JSON or API or something like that. Um, all right. So everyone probably is typing the comments right now. Drink every time Bernard says something like that. Oh, no, I'm kidding. Uh, anyway, let's go to our store and see if it actually works. So let's open that. And there you go. You can actually see over here the text that we added welcome to weekly how and it's pretty nice if you scroll down this should be sticky i believe and there you go you can see it's sticky over here <laughs> however if you put it over here it's not sticky anymore because of the the variable that we have just set up which is uh, if it is greater than sticky variable then it should be sticky otherwise it will remove the class and it will not become sticky after all so yeah so that's how you can use a script tag api for uh for h displaying html codes or uh, display something in the storefront but anyway i hope you guys learned something from this tutorial i hope you can apply what you learn from this video to your shopify apps and make uh good stuff make a lot of great apps for Shopify stores, stuff like that. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed and let us know in the comments below if you have questions. We'll try our best to communicate with you guys. Um, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next part of this tutorial series. Thank you so much for watching.